mothers. This means that not anybody has the ability or had the ability to marry them after the Prophet died. Ibn Kathir, he takes it even further. He says that Allah Ta'ala, naming the Prophet's wives as mothers to every single believer, applies more than just to marriage law. He says, بِالْحُرْمَ وَالْإِحْتِرَامُ وَالْإِحْرَامُ وَالْتَوْبِيرُ وَالْإِعْبَامُ They are our mothers in how we respect them, how we honor them, how we magnify their greatness. Would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them such a title if they weren't to be heeded, if they weren't to be emulated and imitated? Of course, no, he would not. As mothers to every single one of us, it becomes our duty to learn about them, to love them, and to follow their example. Today, we look at the first of the Prophet's wives chronologically and according to many in terms of importance. Khadija radiallahu Khadija was the daughter of the Wailid ibn Asad and Fatima bin Zaidah. al Zahabi describes Khadija as the complete woman, intelligent, noble, religious, generous, and chaste. These qualities earned her the nickname al Tahira before Islam, meaning the pure one. Before her marriage to the Prophet, <coughs> she had been married twice before. First to Abu Hab, who died, and then to Atiq ibn Adil, who divorced her. She had children from both marriages. It might surprise some of you to know that Khadija anha, was married twice before marrying the Prophet When we think of a woman like Khadija, very near perfect, we might not expect that she would be widowed or divorced. We would prefer a more Disney-like storyline where the Prophet ﷺ was her first and only husband. Yet, that's not how it happened. Khadija lost her first husband. Then her second husband was unhappy enough with the marriage to divorce her. Marriage, it seems, comes down to personal compatibility, perhaps more than finding the so-called perfect husband or perfect wife. We have no doubt that Khadija anha was the perfect wife, and yet she was divorced. Divorce is something that can happen to anyone, even one of the best women ever to walk the earth. These things happen, as Allah wills them to happen, with wisdom and with knowledge. Marriages happen, divorces happen, happiness happens, grief happens, triumph happens, and setbacks happen. These things are part of Allah's destiny, and they are not necessarily a reward or a punishment for what you've done or for who you are. Khadija's divorce had nothing to do with who she was as a person or how virtuous she was. At that time, nobody considered Khadija a failure due to her previous marriages. Can we say the same about how we would view a woman in her situation today? Widowed, then divorced, children from each marriage, if people were asked, who's the best? Who's the purest woman in the community? How many of us would even think to consider somebody in Khadija's position? And why is that? What's the difference between our times and theirs? 
Our mistake is that we judge people based on what happens to them. We see someone who is divorced, someone of a complicated family life, children from multiple marriages, and we blame them. We assume that if they were more righteous, that that would not have happened to them. Pious people have more simple storybook lives, at least so we assume. And yet, here is Khadijah proving us wrong. Here is Khadijah, who the Prophet said was one of the best women to walk the earth, teaching us that your worth as a human being and your level of righteousness isn't always reflected by outcomes and results. Khadijah teaches us that you could be the best person in the world and hard things are going to come your way by Allah's wisdom and even His mercy. Khadijah teaches us that what makes someone pious is not the results, which we have no control over, but the process. The choices we make, our intentions, our virtues, our effort. Khadijah was a very wealthy woman. She inherited wealth from her first husband after he died and used it to run her own trading business. She employed men to travel and trade on her behalf. And while this is a common cause for celebration today, as young women try to find role models who are independent and in very public leadership positions, Allah and His Messenger وسلم, never once praised her for that specifically. In fact, they praised Khadija for different qualities and actions entirely. Once, in the early days of the Prophet's mission, وسلم, he was with Jibreel. Jibreel said, Here comes Khadija with food and drink. When she comes, give her salam from her Lord and from me, and give her glad tidings of a house in paradise. For Allah Ta'ala and Jibreel to give someone the greeting of salam and glad tidings of paradise, they have to be a very special, pious person. The timing behind the message was no accident. It wasn't just that she happened to be approaching at that moment. Timing has significance. The Prophet والسلام, he used to say that he loved to fast on Mondays and Thursdays because that was when his deeds were presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he wanted his deeds presented to Allah while he was performing an act of obedience and servitude because it would reflect positively on the presentation of his deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Prophet والسلام, the command of five daily prayers during the Islam of Mi'raj, during the night's journey and the ascension. The timing of it gave extra significance to what was being revealed. Here, Khadija, gets salams from Allah Ta'ala Himself and Jibreel alayhi salam and on top of that she is told that she has a house waiting for her in paradise and what is she doing? She's bringing the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam food and water. She wasn't organizing the trade caravan. She wasn't paying her workers or even giving money to the needy. She was bringing her husband food and water. In my line of work, I talk to couples when they're having difficulties. One of the most common points of conflict is exactly how much each spouse has to do for the other. Do I have to cook and clean? I hear from the women. Do I have to give her so much spending money? I hear from the men. What's really being asked by these types of questions
questions is, what's the bare minimum I can get away with in this relationship? If I were to tell the wife, no, you don't have to cook and clean, then she probably won't do it. If I have to tell the husband that, no, he doesn't have to give her extra spending money, he probably won't do it. If either of them are challenged, they will say, oh, no, the imam said, the imam said I don't have to. The wrong attitude to have and the wrong approach to marriage. Marriage becomes unsustainable when each participant is only focused on doing the bare minimum required. Notice how in the above example, the quality of life has gone down for both of them. No more home-cooked meals for him. No more spending money for her. Instead of, do I have to? Our attitude should be, what more can I do? Isn't it enough for the Prophet ﷺ to have said it in Allah? Certainly, Allah has obligated excellence in everything that we do. Shouldn't it be enough for us that marriage is half of our faith? Khadija understood this. She wasn't concerned with whether she had to bring food and water to the Prophet. She knew that Allah Ta'ala made our relationships with our spouses one of the most important arenas of good deeds. And she excelled in worshiping her creator through serving her spouse. Allah Ta'ala chose to give her salams and promise her paradise while she was doing this work, giving it even more importance.
And Allah Ta'ala, the best of creators, has given every single one of us everything that we need to deal with these responsibilities. Whether it's physical strength, or the instincts to protect, or our ability to make sacrifices and put other people first. Allah put it all in our nature and in our disposition. We step outside of our homes in the morning ready to fight the entire world, if necessary, to protect what is good and what is sacred. But on the inside, we have doubts, we have worries, we have fears, and we wonder if we're up to the task. Can we do it? The Prophet ﷺ himself had these doubts. He himself had these fears. And he did what every single one of us longs to do. He confided in his wife. He opened up to her. He honored her by showing her things he might not show anyone else. And he asked her for advice. Khadija knew what to do. Allah and Musawwir, the best of creators, has given women all that they need to manage this situation. Their tenderness and compassion, their mercy and tact, even their abilities with language and conversation. Khadija takes on the worries of her husband and transforms them into confidence, into resolve, into hope. Every couple should want to have a strong enough relationship where this type of encounter is possible. But it takes work. It takes work to get there. Men, open up to your wives. Ask their opinion and ask for their advice from time to time. They are ready to support you and if the Prophet needed it, there's no shame and us needing it too. Ladies, if your husband opens up to you like the Prophet وسلم, did to Khadija, you need to know that this is a man, this is a sacred trust. How you respond can have consequences for years to come. Don't take the opportunity to prove your point from the last argument. Don't use his fears against him to control him or try to get what you want. Khadija's response, her support and belief nurtured the Prophet وسلم, for the rest of his life, even after her death. Because of this, Adhani says the Prophet وسلم, praised Khadija and even preferred her over his other wives. Long after Khadija was gone, Aisha said, I was never jealous of a woman like I was jealous of Khadija. One day the Prophet وسلم, praised Khadija so much that Aisha said something very mean. She said to the Prophet وسلم, Allah has replaced that old lady for you. Aisha then saw the Prophet وسلم's face change. And she said that he got so angry that she began to feel a sense of dread in her stomach and she prayed to Allah secretly right then and there. She said, oh Allah, if you take away your prophet's anger, I promise I'll never say anything ill about this woman ever again. The Prophet وسلم, he took a second and he gathered himself and then he said to Aisha, how could you say such a thing? I swear by Allah, she believed in me when everyone else called me a liar. She accepted me when everybody else rejected me. And Allah provided me children from her and forbade me from having children from anyone else. Listen carefully to the Prophet's response to Allah Alaihi Wasallam. Look at the order in which these three things are remembered. This is an order in terms of importance. Where is having children on the list? 
last. What's first? She believed in me when everyone else called me a liar. What's next? She accepted me when everybody else rejected me. The Prophet ﷺ, he was a man. His needs were that of a man, the need to be believed, the need to be accepted. And he never forgot for a moment how Khadija built him up in the hard times. Khadija wasn't doing it for favors in this world. She wasn't doing it to get something either immediately or down the road. Khadija also didn't care about what other people would have thought, whether they would look at her behavior and label it as submissive or old-fashioned or backward or any other narrative out there. She didn't care. Khadija was living for Allah with excellence. If she was going to be a wife, she was going to excel at it because it would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She worshipped Allah through her belief in her husband and her acceptance of him and her support of him. And this is part of what made the Prophet say, Maryam, was the best woman of her time. Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun, was the best woman of her time. And Khadija was the best woman of her time. ثم صلى الله عليه وسلم على رحمة كما أمركم ربكم حيث قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذن الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين وانصر عبادك المؤمنين وجعل اللهم بلاد الإسلام آمنا اطمئن يا رب العالمين اللهم ارحم موتانا واعف مبتلانا واشف مرضانا واهد ضالنا برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه يا عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان 